Greetings, neighbors. This is Reflections, the show sponsored by the Paducah Cooperative Ministry, where we, all of us together, do God's work with human hands. My name is Gregory Waldrop, and I'm the pastor at Fountain Avenue United Methodist Church, and I'm your co-host for the Reflection Show. Your other co-host is Karen Winkle from the United Church of Paducah. Welcome, Karen. Good to see you, Gregory. Good to have you with us today. We have um, Pastor Zach Browning in the spotlight to talk to us about his ministry at Reedland Christian Church. He's a good friend of Reflections. You've been a guest co-host even. Yes. So right. uh, we're so glad to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh -huh. And be. What, what we're doing today is really getting to know you better and to get what I call the third dimension of uh, the life of a pastor and the heart of a pastor and also to hear about uh, what you're excited about at Reedland Christian Church and maybe to help us understand um, you know your church a little bit better and and kind of the third dimension of it as well cool. so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself how you find yourself in in this neck of the woods and pastoring here that's uh that's kind of a long story hopefully we have enough time for it uh i uh i wound up here by a variety of different things i, I was in youth ministry for about six or seven years uh probably at least five in full-time ministry and then i volunteered at my home church and uh, never really had uh i guess felt called to ministry uh up until the point that i started working with youth in uh, the church i actually was a sports editor for uh, before I went in, I often wonder. I got paid to go see football games mm. and basketball games. I don't know why I quit that job. It was <laughs> really it was a good deal. But uh, I I have a degree from SIU in Carbondale in journalism, and uh, was working in that trade. Really enjoyed it, and uh, got a, able to work with kids from our our youth group at the Church of Christ that I grew up in, uh, Southern Illinois, a uh, little little town called Mulkey Town, mm -hmm. out in the middle of nowhere. It uh, right on Creek Nation Blacktop. I uh, grew up in a very small church. There were probably um, 60 or 70 on a good Sunday, um, a very biblically based church. And we uh, shared the Word of God, and I began to teach. Uh, got a real passion and fire for working with the youth and was asked by a local church if I would consider uh, being their youth minister. And uh, the first couple times they asked, I just laughed, and I thought, why in the world would I ever go into ministry? You know, I'm, not, I'm definitely not the preacher type. And... Um, God just worked on my heart, you know, really got me uh, focused on His Word. Uh, we took a small group, probably five or six kids that were meeting on Thursday afternoon uh, or evenings after school to do Bible study and just kind of meet and mingle. Uh, within two or three months, we grew to about 24, 25, and it was just, uh, it was a neat time. And I started to feel like, man, maybe I can, you know, do something with this. And uh, finally, after some coaxing by a very excellent preacher, Jerry Aiken, I uh, took the job at Christopher Christian Church. And uh, I guess the rest is history. I've been, I was there for a year and a half and moved to uh, a small church or a bigger church in Heron, Illinois, and I was able to work with the youth and the uh, college age. Uh, so did a little fill-in preaching there, and after three years and uh, finally going back to school, I have a bachelor's degree from St. Louis Christian College. I uh, was there for about two and a half years or so. I felt called to the pulpit, felt like uh, preaching was what God wanted me to do, so I took a small church uh, in Morgan Field and uh, was there for about a, about a year and a half or so and then had an opportunity to come in to be the full-time preacher here at Reedland. So uh, kind of a, a roundabout way of coming down here, but uh, I know it was God's hand and mm. it, was, it was a blessing to be here, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, did, did, did you just, how did you start with the youth? To begin with, is it just something you sort of your turn to do it, or did you sort of feel something no. pushing you that way? <clears throat> I'm I'm glad you ask. I um, haven't always been a preacher. I mentioned that before. Uh, lived uh, the wild, you know, party life. Nothing nothing too illegal or anything, you know, awful. But uh, I remember one Sunday morning, an elder came up to me and he said, uh, you know, we need somebody to fill in as a Sunday school teacher. Would you consider teaching this uh, this group of people? And my first thought was, do you, do you even know who I am? Like, do you know what I do during the week? And as I said, it wasn't anything awful, but I just, I didn't feel like I was godly enough or even close enough to, to a point where I should be teaching. But, um, you know, he said, just think about it. Think about it. It's, it's a month away. And the more I started to think and mull over it, I realized that uh, I'd went to church all my life. Uh, I can remember the day that I went forward and uh, accepted Christ, was baptized, and um, you know, it was a very real thing, but then I just kind of you know, fell away, 
did my own thing. Uh, and I began to realize that you can't go halfway. You either have to be all for God or all against. And uh, the, that month was a real wrestling and struggling for me. Nothing, um, you know, too over the top, but it just a lot of thoughts in my mind. Like, am I, does God really want me to, you know, to do this? Because I took that very seriously, you know, to be able to, to be in a position of teaching and giving people the word. Um, and I, I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. And I taught that class. And then a couple weeks later, uh, he asked if I would help out with the older ladies class uh, of the church. And that intimidated me even more. I was like, these, these people have been alive three and four times as long as I have. You know, I don't have any business teaching them. But we learned from each other and grew. I had an opportunity to take over a small youth group that we had. Um, and me and my best friend, Ryan Martin, began to alternate weeks. And he would teach one week. I would teach another on Thursday nights. And... Um, after a while, I realized that, you know, I've, I've made the choice to be all for God. And, you know, if that means going into the ministry, I'm, I'm open to it. And when that uh, opportunity presented itself, I thought, well, if this is what you want, God, make a way for it. And uh, it was pretty clear that that's what he wanted. Wow. So it was amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will say in defense of, of, of those of us, I'll include myself kind of as somebody with the background, um, uh, that's colorful, uh, that, that that's very helpful to God, mm -hmm. I think, um, because it, you wouldn't be able to relate to people if you didn't have, you know, your own experiences and your own, you know, stories. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, a big thing for me is that I didn't, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it, but nothing overly illegal or anything, but you, you, when you go through trials, when you have these things that you deal with, and then when people come to you for counseling, when people say, you know, I'm really struggling with this, it's not just a, I'll pray for you, or it's not just a, let's talk about it. You can share stories of, I've been there, I've, I've had that temptation, I've had that in front of me, and I've, I've stumbled but God has forgiven me and I've moved on from that. And I think that's what, uh, that's what people need to see. They, they need to see people real and authentic. Uh, they need to see us fall down and they need to see us get back up. I think that's one of my favorite proverbs is uh, a fool falls and lays there, but a wise man falls and gets back up. And I, I just, I love that. I think that it's, it's so right when we are real with our, uh, our faults and our shortcomings, it, it makes other people realize, hey, you know, maybe, Maybe this Christian life isn't as hard as I thought it was. Right, mm -hmm. and it, it does also serve to turn our attention to God, doesn't it? Yes, and really realize that, uh, that our confidence is in the Lord, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not in our leaders or ourselves, for sure. Sure, uh, mm -hmm. definitely. Well, one of the things that I'm appreciating in in the story of your ministry is um, a willingness to step forward, um, kind of. Uh, respectful of, of God's agenda for you rather than asserting your own. It might be easy for, for some of us to kind of step into something and already start looking to the horizon and try to figure out where this is pointed <laughs> or where we want it to go. And it sounds like you kind of step and then let God show you um, what's next sure. and, and that you're respectful of God's timing in that as well. Definitely. I've, uh, I haven't always been that way. I've, I've been the guy that, uh, that prays, God, this is what I would like to happen and this is how I want it to happen. And here, I have the timeline worked out. If, you, you know, if you'd like to consult me for your will, uh, I have everything planned out in front of me. And I think that's, uh, that's the, the quickest way to make God chuckle, I think. When we go to him and we say, you know, almighty creator of the universe, I have an idea yeah. and I think it's better than what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. I can just see him going, ha, <laughs> Oh, just wait. I've got something for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, early on in ministry, even um, wasn't sure if I wanted to go to school. You know, I, I thought, uh, you know, I, I love the Lord. I've grown up in a church that has taught the Bible. I'm pretty familiar with it. I don't have to have a degree to be in ministry. But uh, uh, the church that I was at in uh, Heron, First Christian Church, allowed me to go back to school. They helped me out with uh, financing. They helped me out with, uh, you know, giving me the leisure to. Uh, study and to do ministry at the same time and that was just a big blessing for me and a confirmation once I got there that God was doing a lot of great things uh, through teaching through doing a lot of things and that kind of opened my eyes to where I was like okay well, we'll see what God has in, in store for me and I was very comfortable at Heron was there for three years uh, to be honest with you I really wasn't sure I wanted to leave I, I enjoyed doing youth ministry I enjoyed working with the the college kids we played uh, 
played cards every Wednesday night and some of the discussions that we had around the, the table while we would play spades or hearts or uh, you know go fish or whatever we decided for that evening were really in-depth and really beneficial to my walk with God but uh, his call on my heart every time I was in that pulpit every time I was on stage I can remember when I was smaller and I started doing that uh, even well, I guess I was probably about 13 or 14 I was asked to do a devotion on a Sunday evening and just uh, I did the salt and light devotion and I had my light bulb and my salt shaker and people could hear me from the back row come down and just clink, 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 clink. I was so nervous. I was rattling them together and I got up there and kind of, you know, I had this good 10 minute devotion that I planned out and about a minute and a half later I ended and I thought, okay, I guess I'm done. I should really? sit down now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, that was, it's, it's a transition and I've seen God work through me, uh, use me in a lot of different ways and uh, I've, I've come to the point now where I don't, try to look ahead. I, I really am just pleasantly surprised by what's going on in the moment. And uh, you have to plan ahead. You have to look, you know, towards the future for direction, but not for what's next. What do I do? And always questioning it. I think you just let God lead. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why I feel really comfortable because I'm surrounded by leaders at my church that kind of have that same, excuse me, philosophy that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll just, as God works and moves and leads, we'll go. Mm -hmm. No, I'm thinking how marvelous it is you had that congregation in Heron that was so mm. supportive of you and enabled you um, to go to school and not only that, you know, affirmed um, time in your week to study. And you have something similar happening here, which yes. um, I'm just a little jealous of, actually, because <laughs> you're, you're working on a master's yes, degree. Yes, I am. I'm currently going to Lipscomb University in Nashville. Uh, I drive down once a week on Mondays mm -hmm. and I have a class from four until seven. Uh, I also have a weekend course that uh, three times a semester I go down for the weekend on a Friday night and all day Saturday. And uh, the same thing here. They are, they see the value of education, uh, of wisdom, you know, applying that knowledge that I'm acquiring. They see the value of, you know, get, getting a little fire under me. Uh, I think as a leader, and I'm sure you guys feel this as well, uh, th it's so hard when you feed and you're constantly, you're given the food from the pulpit, it's, it's hard to take time for you to have, you know, some time where you eat, mm -hmm. where you sit down and worship and, you know, really connect. And without that, I think that we get a little dry in our walks with God. And uh, for us to have that fire and that passion, I think we need it. And my church has just been unbelievably supportive. Uh, they allow me the day on Monday to come into the office for a little bit, do some things and, uh, you know, to do a half a day where I'm gone. And I just go down to, to the library, I study, you know, I go to class. It's, uh, it's an excellent thing. I really, I can't say thank you enough to them because mm -hmm. they've uh, allowed me to do this. It's a big blessing. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, and how long have you been in Paducah now? Uh, I mean, really? I've been at the church for about two and a half years. And um, you've uh, uh, met and married? Yes, a yes. Wife? I, I have. been there, and that's all part of the, the shape of ministry. Uh, I, I'm for, since ancient times, the church has known that marriage or singleness is a part of a call. It's part mm -hmm. of, it's, it's, it's an integral part of it. And so you're married now. I am. I am. The Lord's blessed me. Uh, I actually met my wife at uh, Lourdes. She's a physical therapist and um, just visited with her a few times uh, over the internet and over, you know, just met some different ways. And finally, uh, I said, you know, we should, we should sit down and have lunch together. And uh, I, you know, call on people at Lourdes when they don't feel well or, you know, desire somebody to come and just pray with them. And I uh, was there one day and we just sat down and after she got off work, talked for a while. And it was just, uh, it was a really neat thing. You know, we just kind of slowly uh, got to know each other. And I can remember, you know, one day just thinking, wow, this is totally a God thing. You know, she came from a very Christian uh, background, a good uh, family. She's from Metropolis originally. And uh, I just, you know, I really took a lot of, uh, I guess, spiritual movement from that because I'd prayed that God would find me someone that, uh, you know, that I could have and share my ministry with and uh, somebody that would compliment me. And she really, really is that to me. She's, uh, uh, in a lot of ways, my opposite. Uh, I, I like to enjoy what we have, and she's always pinching pennies and, you know, telling us, you know, we can't eat out today. We need to go home and have soup, you know, or something. Uh, you know, just you know, the, the small things that make us a good team because we really put ourselves together. And uh, I feel blessed to be, uh, to be able to, to have her by my side. We've been married uh, about a year and a month now. So it's been, a <clears throat> been an interesting journey here at uh, Paducah. Came here single, um, 
uh, very different state of mind, I guess, that you could say. And uh, I think I, I found a church that was feeling a lot of the same things that I was. Uh, we walked a path together to heal and to get past some things that, um, you know, different ministries you leave and you, you know, nothing was wrong. You just feel uh, a guilt. Maybe I could have done better. Maybe I could have done something uh, a little bit better. And the same thing I think happened at uh, Reedland before I was there and we were able to heal together, uh, really find a niche where I think that uh, the first couple days that I was there, and I've had people admit this to me, I don't think they would have wanted me as their preacher. I was just a single kid that was 28, 29, you know, didn't know much about the world and uh, you know, that might not have been the direction that they wanted, but after getting to know each other, I think we've really bonded, and I feel more at home than ever uh, with my church family. And it's, that is definitely an answer to prayer. Right. Beautiful. Well, let's talk about your church just yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that um, uh, Reedland Christian Church was connected to First Christian Church denominationally, and you're, you're not part of the Disciples of Christ are you? No, we are not part of the Disciples of Christ. Way back when, uh, Restoration Movement, Thomas Campbell and uh, you know those guys, um, very the Alexander uh, Stone Campbell Movement, when you look at those guys and the way they started things, us the uh, Disciples and the, the Church of Christ were all together mm -hmm. and we've kind of uh, the disciples, I believe, wanted a, sort of a governmental structure or just wanted some uh, cohesiveness to bond together. Um, and, you know, out of uh, a good heart, you know, we've kind of went our separate ways. But we are an independent Christian church. Uh, we don't have a uh, what you would call a governmental body. You know, we don't send money to a particular organization or a particular, you know, headquarters. Right. Uh, we have elders that independently lead our church. Uh, we have deacons that do all of the footwork, I guess you could say. They are the workmen. And um, we, we fellowship with just about, you know, anybody that will take us. I guess we're kind of the, you know, if, you'll, if you preach the word and you believe Christ was crucified for your sins, then we're, we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, we've done VBS with the Church of Christ down the street from us, Reedland Church of Christ. We've partnered with them on a couple of things, youth group events. Uh, part of the Ministerial <laughs> Alliance where I work with the, the Reedland Baptist Church, the United Methodist Church, uh, Church of Christ, Salt and Light, uh, a few of the other uh, churches from around. So we are, uh, we're not officially linked to anybody, but as I said, we, we like to reach out and do things. So it's, it's neat. You have weekly communion? Yes, weekly communion. That are, uh, We're very similar in the Church of Christ uh, theologically in the sense that um, our feeling is that uh, when we look at the book of Acts, we see that uh, Paul stayed for a whole week so that he might have communion with, uh, with the body. He thought it was pretty important, uh, and, and we, we observe that weekly. Uh, we think that it's a wonderful uh, tradition. Uh, we try not to, and I, I, especially me personally, I try not to be condemning of anybody that uh, if you're glorifying God in what you do, then, then we think that you're, you know, and you've got biblical precedent for what you're doing, then we're not going to condemn. It's not our job to point fingers, but uh, at our service, we, we love communion. Uh, we think that it's a weekly, you know, a Sunday morning thing that's excellent. We, uh, we stress baptism as the outward sign of the inward decision that we've already made, uh, and, and that's big. I think for me, I can remember going down, um, and it's something that I can point to as that moment in time. Uh, and a lot of people have that same you know, moment in time where they just ask Christ into their heart. It's the prayer that they prayed. A lot of people have that when they, they come forward and they make a commitment in front of uh, the church. And as mm -hmm. a church, as a Christian church, we really believe that baptism is that uh, forward commitment. So those are the, baptism and communion are probably two of the things we're very passionate about. We, we want to live those out and share those with people. So. You know, the Methodists always were weekly communion people mm -hmm. as well in their, in their origins and uh, really got into a monthly habit because of the circuit riders would only come around once mm -hmm. a month. Yep. And they had communion every chance they could when mm -hmm. the preachers got there, but it was only once a month and that sort of, that habit got to, got started. So mm -hmm. the weekly communion really is a... It's a to me, it's a joy. Yeah, and it can also be, uh, it can be something that you have to wrestle with on a personal level because it can be very... Um, habit forming. I'll put it that way. You ha I, I know as a Christian, we have to struggle not to get into a rut because uh, with our church, you know, we do things fairly uh, organized and about the same way every week. So for us, after I'm done preaching, somebody comes up and does a communion meditation, we serve communion and then we pass our offering plate. So it can be very uh, easy to get into the cracker juice mm -hmm. past the offering plate and you know look at my watch so hope the announcements mm -hmm. don't take too long we got to get the cracker barrel yeah. you know it's uh it can be 
a struggle in that sense, but we think that it's, it's good to remember that uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. Talk a little bit about the, some of the ministries that you're involved with, uh, with your congregation. We've got a lot going on in our church, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I love about uh, us is that we, we live our faith out. Uh, one of the best things that's going on in our church right now is our Wednesday nights, uh, uh, study prayer and food. We uh, get together at 6 o'clock, and each one of the, the members takes turns every now and then of preparing a meal uh, on Wednesday, and it can be something as simple as soup and sandwich. Uh, we have potlucks on the end of the, the month, the first week uh, of every month, the first Wednesday of every month is pizza night. And then in between, we have different things. Uh, we have a, uh, a couple of ladies that make tacos. Uh, for taco night, they bring all of your stuff. You make your own taco. We have... Uh, um, you know, chili nights and things like that. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it can be very uh, big dinners, elaborate. We've had people that have made, you know, chicken and dumplings and uh, fried chicken and green beans and stuff. And then we've had just little soup and sandwiches. But we, the fellowship that goes on there is amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's just that is really why I think our church is a family unit, is it goes back to that time where we get to interact with each other. You know, I can know that, uh, you know, that's Frank and he works for the city. Uh, but when I get down and I sit down with people uh, at a table, I know their, their last name. I know how long they've worked with the city. I know how many kids they have. I know how many uh, you know, times that they have struggled with a particular situation, and we begin to get uh, friendly yeah. with each other. And Season bond. of their life and the whole bit. Sure, yeah. sure. And it's neat to have that. And it's, it's very neat that we don't really get into our little cliques or our little groups. I see people, you know, around asking how people are, you know, how's, how's your, you know, throat? I know that you were sick last week. How are, you know, your, your head doing better? I knew you had some headaches. And it's just neat to see mm -hmm. how people gravitate towards each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the best ministries that we have uh, because when we're done eating, we pray together for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. We take prayer requests, go upstairs, and then we uh, usually walk through the Bible. We just pick different books to go through. And uh, right now we're currently in the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm really, really enjoying that. And we have a uh, Sunday night Bible study as well where we're going through the book of Luke. And uh, we've had some interesting discussions then. It's a smaller group, uh, whereas on Wednesday, uh, there's been times when we've had just as many people on Wednesday evenings as we had the previous Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll, we'll have anywhere between 50 and 60 people on Wednesday nights. And for a church of 70 to 80 average attendance, that is an excellent turnaround. You know, a lot of people, it's hard for them to get out in the middle of the week. Right. But uh, we have a small group Bible study on uh, Sunday night. We have a, a, a ladies' Bible study on Tuesday that is just, oh, man, it's, it's wonderful. They've been going through the Beth Moore uh, books, uh, different ones. Uh, they watch the videos and discuss things. And I just, I can't say enough. They're, those are some prayer warriors that are in that room. They gather together, and for two hours every Tuesday, they are, they're tight. You know, and uh, that's an awesome ministry. Our Cub Scouts, uh, we have a Cub Scout pack that meets. One of our elders is the, the pack master takes care of things. Um, we've got a lot, a lot of good stuff going on. They allow me to get out and minister as well. I, I get to substitute teach at uh, local schools. Haven't done much of that since I've been back to, you know, working on my master's, but I like to get back in it. Uh, and I also teach for the Red Cross, uh, do first aid and CPR, um, things of that nature. So we've got, uh, got a variety of ministries going on at our church. A lot of good stuff that's, that's happening. Right. Have you ever needed your Red Cross training in church? I have uh, not at this particular church. Mm -hmm. I have had uh, a lady that did pass out uh, when I was youth minister, and um, uh, luckily there were a couple of nurses. And being young and spry, a little bit thinner than I am now, I was able to hurdle a couple of pews and get to a phone, and that's how I was best served in that situation. But uh, praise the Lord, I have not had it. Mm -hmm. We always uh, joke about, you know, that's one thing that you want to know and never want to have to use. Yep. Right. You know, so. What else can we expect if we come and visit you at your church? Instrumental music and yes. worship? Yes, yes, we have an excellent couple of praise teams. We have a, a lady that teaches at uh, the Lone Oak um, Grade School, uh, Lone Oak Kindern uh, Grade School. She is, uh, she brings a very contemporary, flavorful style. She comes from a larger church in Illinois and uh, really brings some of the praise choruses. Uh, but does a great job of inter integrating hymns into that. Mm -hmm. And then our, our other praise team leader, Bruce, uh, who's, you're going to find him up front, uh, he is going to be more of the con uh, traditional, I think. He, he does a good job of working the uh, contemporary courses and uh, 
um, you know, praises in as well. But he's like me. He comes from a church of Christ, uh, comes from a, you know, church in the wildwood, power in the blood and amazing grace. That's good Sunday morning, mm -hmm. you know. Right. But uh, he also appreciates some of the newer stuff and works it in. So we have a good blend, good mix of everything. Um, services start at 1030. That's when our preaching and teaching is going on. We have Bible study at 930 uh, that is, uh, you know, age oriented. Um, we just we have a lot of good ministries going on. We I also I'm not the only staff member. Uh, we have two part time folks. Uh, Brad Fleming is our youth director. Uh, he takes care of junior high and high school. Uh, he teaches on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. Uh, does a great job with them. In fact, he just took them paintballing, uh, mm -hmm. which is you know there's nothing better to do with a bunch of junior high kids than to take them out on a big field and let them shoot each other. <laughs> so that's use their energy wisely, which is excellent. And then uh, Karen Mathis is our children's minister. She is uh, our children's leader. She takes care of those kids and I tell you I, I can't brag on her enough she has an outreach just about every month uh, you know working towards things their big goal now is uh, she's taking a group of kids to uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, to do some outreach this summer. They're going to work on folks' homes that are underprivileged, that might need some, uh, you know, yard work that can't, aren't physically able to get out mm -hmm. and do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's taking care of that. Organizes our nursery, children's church. She teaches uh, uh, children's church, and we worship. So we have. Uh, I, it's not just uh, me when it comes to Reedland Christian. I'm complimented by an excellent staff, and I have the best leaders in the world. Our elders are men of God that want to see growth and that want to see um, people comfortable and, you know, and doing good things for the Lord. Same thing with deacons. So we've, I'm blessed with good leadership. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's a good gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would say also you're blessed with the ability to embrace the gifts of others. Mm -hmm. Um, you're clearly uh, a positive leader and enthusiastic, and that's wonderful. I'm really impressed with, um, uh, with, with how wise you are at this point in your ministry, at a Thank time you. really when, you know, um, you know if you look at uh, the de development, it, it can be a very um, ego-centered time for, for someone mm -hmm. and a real me, 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 and mm -hmm. I, I really hear in you... Um, uh, a, a gift for um, uh, uh, wise and sensitive leadership mm -hmm. and, and appreciating uh, everything mm -hmm. that surrounds you and the whole mm -hmm. dynamic of a whole. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think being put in a situation where um, I have a lot of good things around me, it's easy to see them. Uh, and, and not that I've ever had a bad ministry or that, you know, but you tend to, when you don't have certain things, when they come back into your life, you really appreciate them more. Yeah. And uh, I think that's one of the things that having been at different churches and seeing a different group of leadership at just about every church that I've been at, when you, when you get into uh, different things, you really see that, yeah. man, this is a great opportunity yeah. for growth and a, a very uplifting time. So. Yeah. Well, Pastor Zach Browning, we're so glad that you've been with us and we're thrilled for the ministry that you're involved in at Reedland Christian Church and we're going to have you back soon. Right. Thanks for joining us today here at Reflections and we just invite you with Paducah Cooperative Ministry to uh, do God's work with human hands however you can, whenever you can. Thanks for joining us today. Shalom. Shalom. In